Big round of applause for yourself. It is my tremendous pleasure to welcome to the stage our first keynote speaker ever of all flowers, to which we hope to have all of you back to the next one and make it even better. Please give a warm, warm welcome to Gary Vaynerchuk. Thank you, thank you. Uh, good afternoon, thank you so much. A bunch of things I wanna cover. Given that uh, it's an intimate crowd, I also might open up a little Q&A at the end. Um, let me take a step back. Uh, for me, this is an important uh, keynote and event for a bunch of reasons, but probably the biggest is it probably encompasses so many of my core principles of how I see the business world. So much of my career has been predicated on things that were early or things that were evolving. Uh, a bunch of you know, and many probably don't, but my career started in the liquor business. So uh, in 1996, I launched one of the first e-commerce wine businesses in America. So when I started really looking at the space, even five or six years ago and much closer over the last year, I, there's just so much empathy I have for a lot of things that everybody's going to be dealing with really over the next half century as this all navigates. And I think a lot of people are like, oh yeah, three years or six years or nine years, you know, you get into regulated businesses with all this kind of money in play. There's a lot that everybody in here is gonna go through. But I'm gonna take it a step back because I think the biggest thing when you give a talk is you need to provide value. So I'm gonna give you a little context about how, how I see the world, what I see, and then more importantly, what I think a lot of people here in the B2B or B2C space can take away from it. I think the biggest elephant in the room, I'm sure, for anybody that does know who I am, is in the world of marketing, there's clearly things that I deeply believe in that are restricted in the environment uh, uh, in this world. And I've been spending a lot of time over the last six to nine months, especially digging deep into what would I do if I had to sell a consumer product direct to consumer or through a dispensary. What does the world look like when you have to market something in 2018 that doesn't have the ability to use Google or Facebook as infrastructures as almost every other industry is taking advantage of? So, for me, it's really interesting. In, in, when I was 14, I was driving to my dad's liquor store. I was very much like so many of you in here, already a hardcore entrepreneur. You know, I was making two to $3,000 a weekend when I was 14 selling baseball cards. And when you have $30,000, $40,000 in cash under your bed, and you're 14 and you're not selling weed, you're doing a good job. <laughs> so, so I was doing it, I always understood supply and demand, I was really good at picking trends, great at picking players that were about to pop, all that good stuff. Uh, but then my dad dragged me in, two bucks an hour, you know, bagging ice in, in dad's shop. I was born in the former Soviet Union, so this was an immigrant kind of situation. There was no negotiations. My weekends and holidays were shot my entire high school year and, I, and, I, and my high school career. And I worked and worked and worked. Fell in love, actually, with the wine business. Uh, read a lot about this town and other parts of California and, and became hardcore about it. In 1994, I was in my dorm room at Mount Ida College playing Madden 94, dominated by the way. <laughs> and my buddy walked into the room and said, you have to come and see this. So after I wrapped up that game, I went into a room and there was eight guys hanging around a computer. So how many people here are under 30? Raise your hands. Cool. So you young fuckers, you don't understand. There was a world on the internet. I lived in it. It was fucking crazy. And uh, this was it. This was pre-internet. I sit in front of a computer and I watch people spend eight hours on the internet. It was so crazy, the internet itself, that it was worth sitting and watching somebody navigate through it for eight hours. Finally, I got my turn to go on the computer at like two in the morning, and in about 20 minutes on America Online, I ended up showing up on a, landing somehow on a baseball card bulletin board. And I realized literally within the first 20 minutes of ever being on the internet that my life had changed. That everything I knew was gonna be different. That this thing, whatever it was, was important. And 18 months later, I launched that e-commerce site. And from 1998 to 2003, in a five-year window, I grew my dad's liquor store from a three to a $60 million business. I did it on the back of and during a time of that I feel is very similar in this space and this time. What I mean by that is the greatest thing for so many people in this room, and, and it's really interesting, I, I think when you look at the conference that we just watched, actually, how about this? By a show of hands, how many people have been in the cannabis space 
either cowboy-esque or professionally uh, for more than five years. Raise your hand. Makes sense. Ten. Cool. So for, for, for events like this, first year in, that kind of thing, regulation, where we are, this is the foundation of the industry. Literally the only other time I remember ever giving a keynote that feels like this was when I spoke at Web 2.0, when I spoke at FOA in 2006 and 7 in the internet world, right? It's 2006, 2007, I, I knew that dig.com and you know, all the, it was, you know, Flickr, for any of the OGs in here that remember that shit, that's, that's pre-Instagram fucking kids. <laughs> Flickr and, and Woot.com, that was pre-Groupon, which is dead, I don't even know what that is. You know, anyway, it was early. I was in the wine business. I'd been in the internet wine business at that point for about 10 years. But when I would ask the question of how many people have been into tech or things of that nature in 2006, it just looked like this. You guys are cooler, and there's a little more swag, but it's the same fucking faces. It's the OGs in the game that understand exactly what is about to transpire over the next half decade, a decade, but more importantly, and I wish you guys could zoom into the goosebumps, as this gentleman shook his head like it gave it to me, to be honest, and it did, because the one thing I remember about being in London or South by Southwest in 2005, 6, 7, was they were there for it. In 2006 and 7, when I went to South by Southwest, people were there to be part of tech, for the sake of tech, to change the world. The, the, the aspirations and the ideology were remarkable. The far majority of this room today, 2018, right here, together, is in it for it. They've been in it. They're not flying in from Wall Street or Silicon Valley. There's people in here. There's people in here, but the majority of this room is in it. Now, this is super important. As I hear that wonderful thank you and I get it and I respect that. This is a very important conversation, I'll tell you why. The OGs in this room that have been through it, that have been, you know, it's funny, I was spending some time and looking at an article being rated and I was telling some of the people on my team who don't even hear the story, the amount of times the ABC came to Wine Library because I was navigating and doing things early that nobody ever did before and when you're biggest, you get picked on because you can pay the fine. Don't get it twisted, it's very simple. It's called winner's tax. We don't tell you that at B school, but that's what it is. This, the energy is very interesting to me, and I'm very, very humbled and honored to be on it. You know, you know, I'll say it this way, it's unfortunate for me, unlike when I got into tech or many other things I've done in my life, because of the profile of my business career, it's harder for me to kind of go into new spaces and do what I naturally want to do. To be very frank, I, I don't know if I've ever felt the combination of, of gratitude and feeling humble and at the same token, a sense of responsibility of giving this talk today. Because, much like the way I entered into the tech space or the wine space or other things that I've done, I just want to learn, right? I, 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 there's a lot, you know, I'm doing a lot of listening. The reason I teamed up with Josh Ram and the rest of Green Street is I didn't want to come into this space and think that I knew everything or things of that nature. I want to take it nice and slow and pay attention. I have a lot to say. Listen, I, there's a lot of things that I think I can bring to the table to this industry, and that's really what I want to focus on. I don't, I don't know if I could be disproportionately the least knowledgeable of a lot of the nuances within this space for giving this talk. But what I do know, and I appreciate the thank you, is I did live very aggressively the transformation of the tech industry going from the OGs to everybody. Right? To those kids being nerds, to then everybody wanting to be a part of it. This space, and you guys know this better than I do, but I fucking pay attention to everything and everybody, how they talk, what they talk about. The level of disrespect and misunderstanding about this industry from the outside is laughable. The sophistication that I saw in that room of people navigating their brands, distribution, and how they're gonna navigate it is as good, if not better, than any other industry that I see. But here's the case, and this is super important. There's nuances that I, that I spent a lot of time thinking about, what the fuck am I gonna talk about today that's gonna bring value to this audience? The two things that I think you can get out of my talk are really interesting. Number one, being underestimated and misunderstood is a massive business advantage. There's a lot of people in this room that are so desperate for 
acceptance of like this is real and all these kind of things like this is gonna be spending so much time trying to convince somebody of the legitimacy or the seniority or the sophistication of the space without realizing that they should be spending 100% of their time on the end consumer and building their advantage. The leverage and preference of the majority of the people in this room would actually be for people coming into the space to dramatically slow down, not speed up. For all the good that dollars and all these other things come out, the more time that you have planting your flag and establishing your brand and building a relationship with the end consumer, the more leverage you have, period. So I think there needs to be very thoughtful of who you want coming in, how fast, and spend less time on trying to get legitimacy from somebody. Let me promise you something. Trying to convince people that are no people is a waste of fucking time. Trying to convince people that are no people is a waste of time. And I think that's just something some of you need to hear because that no person for a lot of you is your fucking mom. <laughs> that no person is that your brother that you respect or your homie or your slick. So just be very thoughtful of who you try to convince this is real because I think that's a lot of wasted energy in early times. Number two, you need to be thoughtful of all the new people that are coming in. If you play it right for yourself, it could be the most remarkable thing. But as a collective, these very early days are super important. This is inevitable at scale. This is, watching this makes me laugh because this is exactly what the rooms look at. This is actually way more, this is more. Even though it's, these days for me, a small room, you know, this is way more faces than the ones that I saw in the tech space. And a lot of these faces went on to become the founders of Uber and Zucks and the founders of Instagram and things of that nature. So a couple things. Number one, if you were fortunate enough to be smart enough, and that's the only word I can think of. If you are fortunate enough to be smart enough to be in this fucking room right now, please do not do what so many of my homies from tech in 2006, 7, 8 do to me, which is reminisce and are sad that they did not take full advantage of their pole position and where the world is going. The biggest mistake that so many of you will do today is not network with other people at this place. And I'm actually saying that for the people that are sitting at the top 10 and 20% in this space right now who think there's somebody and aren't understanding. I remember when Mark Zuckerberg, and there's a picture that I have that I'll probably throw in a throwback Thursday soon, where Mark Zuckerberg asked me to set up having lunch with Kevin Rose, the founder of Dig.com at the time, because that was the alpha player in the space of time. There are fancy people here walking around like they're big shit because they just raised some money or they got a couple dollars in their pocket and they don't realize the person that wants to say hello to them is gonna be their fucking boss in six years. <laughs> Next, you could not even fathom the level of abundance that there will be for this room. If I could convince you with anything in this room is for you to understand that your gains are not coming at anybody else's expense in this room. Every single person in this room today can get theirs without it coming out of somebody else's pocket in this room. <laughs> It makes me very happy that you guys cla clap that up. I'll tell you why. That level of collective response to that statement really makes me feel good because I'm like, cool, that's what's up. Like, if you really, really fucking understood, even if you're directly, if you're like, fuck, how the fuck is that? Like, that dude over the other side's got the same exact kind of fucking vape pens as me. No. no. <laughs> if you really, really wrap your head around how much abundance is in the system, you're here. This event, this is not a bullshit event, this is, um, take as many fucking photos in the next 30 hours as you can, because you're gonna throw these Throwback Thursday photos up in 11 years, and this is going to be the foundation of the industry that is, and you're gonna be really happy you have these photos. People are like, oh shit, I used to have hair, and all this stuff, it's gonna be <laughs> If I, I think you guys are starting to pick up on the cadence. For me, early e-commerce in the 90s, the kids that switch from baseball cards to comic books, I won't bore you. Fucking 
definitely the tech space of 2005 and six. That is what is going on here, I promise you. I've got a lot of options, a lot of opportunities in my life right now. I'm not sitting here, I didn't do the Green Street deal for kicks and giggles. Joe Whitmarsh is sitting right here. Gagnon, where are you, right there. You know, real just quick. Joe Whitmarsh worked at VaynerMedia from day one. I didn't send him to head up account at Green Street for kicks and giggles. There's plenty of shit going on at Vayner. It's a $150 million company, we need our horses. Gagnon, I was courting forever to move from Florida to New York. I didn't send him to head up creative at Green Street for kicks and giggles. I'm not spending my time at this event. I'm not spending all my fucking times on the calls with Ram and his fucking crazy fucking bullshit ideas. <laughs> <laughs> the best part about him though is one fucking genius idea fucking net scores the rest of it by 100. <laughs> Be in the yes business. Be in the yes business. That's not happening for kicks and giggles. This has happened. I'm not guessing, this has happened. When I see the economics just in the state of California, whether it's two years, six years, 44 fucking years, if you're playing it for the game, my biggest thing is I just want to weed out the people in this room who think they're coming in real quick, doing a financial arbitrage, getting a lot of funding, and flipping to a bigger company. And, and I appreciate this. The claps are coming from the OGs that are purely in it. I'm saying it because it's a stupid fucking business idea. <laughs> Mainly on the back of, it's gonna be harder to exit than you think. There's gonna be some early action right now. It's like cryptocurrency. Who here's fucking crypto on the side? Don't lie. <laughs> I know you. You got this DNA, you got that. Don't bullshit me. <laughs> the biggest one I have with crypto, just as a comp, is crypto's right, right? Blockchain's right. It's just that I have the advantages of being a little older, a little OG with my business. I lived through the browser wars and the search wars of the early 90s. I remember when Ask Jeeves and fucking existed. <laughs> and Dog Pile was going to be the next big search engine. What you realize is only one breaks through. Yahoo broke through. Google broke through. So cool, and I don't know if it's going to be Bitcoin or Ethereum or whatever it's going to be, something's going to break through. The problem is 98% are going to go to zero. People are maxing out their credit cards to get the next fucking crypto. So it's about thoughtfulness. That's different than what's going on here. If you ask me, and you notice I just talked about that 15 minutes ago, my bet, and I'd like to be historically correct, so I'm not just saying shit to be nice to this crowd, because I don't give a fuck. I'm saying this strictly, D Rock, where you at? Cool. I'm saying this, where's your camera? <laughs> I'm saying this for myself. 25% of this room is going to be the foundation of the OGs of this fucking trillion dollar industry. Most things aren't going to go to zero here. That is not the sense. That is not my audit. That is not my prediction. And I think you need to be very, very thoughtful. I always talk about when we make a little bounce. I talk, it's really tough because we can't do it in our space here. I talk about everybody spending as much money as possible on Facebook and Instagram right now because it's underpriced. I say that because when I built my dad's store, when people are like, oh man, he built it from three to 60, that's amazing, I think that fucking sucks because I know it should have been three to 200, but I didn't spend enough on Google ads when I had the best hand, right? The biggest, you know, forget about passing on Uber. When you're investing, you're always making mistakes. I operated Wine Library. So when I say the biggest mistake I've made in my career, I was controlling that car, right? The biggest mistake I've made in my career was I didn't spend enough money on Google AdWords in 2001, 2003 when I knew I had it. But I was too young and didn't understand how special that moment was when I was buying keywords for five cents and getting unlimited customers. I just thought I would always be there. I didn't know any different. I was a fucking kid. I didn't have the experience. I was smart enough to see it, but I wasn't experienced enough to squeeze the fuck out of it. That's why I'm yelling so loud if you follow my content on Instagram and Facebook, because the ads are so underpriced. And I know it's going to go away. And shit you buy for three and four dollars CPMs to get people are gonna be 20 and 30 dollars, they're not gonna be as effective. So actualized, it's gonna go from two dollars to 50 dollars in my brain. And it's gonna happen fast. Two years, everyone's gonna be sad that they didn't do more on Instagram and Facebook, right? They're not gonna be crying about algorithms, they're gonna be crying about where are people. Because that's what always happens. We're not gonna be able to do that here, but what we can do here is understand our leadership position. Hello. Um, and so what I really am passionate
passionate about is for people in this room to understand how many options we do have. If you're in this space, even if you're a brand, or if you're a grower, your permission to be the media company of this space is there. AKA, every fucking person in this room needs to start thinking about their podcast yesterday. Every single person in this room needs to be thinking about writing a white paper and putting it on LinkedIn yesterday. Everybody here has to shift from crying, and that's what a lot of you are doing. Wah, wah, Instagram and Facebook and Google aren't taking my money. Nobody gives a fuck about your tears. <laughs> Stop crying about what you can't do and start figuring out what you can do. You can be dominating Instagram, spend the fucking 900 hours building out an influencer network so that they can fucking do posts and give you cosign. You're good. You could start a YouTube blog and document the journey of building your business in a space along the way. I wish I could watch Zuck's fucking blog and how he built Facebook, you know, if he was doing this 10 years ago. God forbid, aka God willing, your company explodes, that blog of how you made it is gonna be watched for the next 50 fucking years in perpetuity. You can do a ton of shit, but we have to shift our marketing mindset in this space from being advertisers to be media companies. We have to produce content. You have to produce hey. content. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> I think that the other thing that I would spend a ton of time on is more business development within each other. You know, if you really clapped up the whole, there, you know, there's abundance here, I think if you make that switch in your head, if that fucking makes sense to you, if you look at it slightly different, it's gonna open you up to doing shit with other people. Everybody in the beginning, especially, in just every business, everybody thinks they're sitting on some secrets, that their ideas are worth a trillion, that they know something that nobody else is seeing. That's your fucking ego talking. You got no secrets. There's no ID. You don't copyright shit no more. You execute. And I think the relationship currency in this marketplace is very, very high. So, these are the things that are running through my head. These are the things that are very obvious to me. And I think that what is inevitably gonna happen in this space is the market is going to filter it out. I've noticed a lot of clapping and some I really enjoy it from. Let me make you one promise, because this happens every time. The authentic winners are gonna win. No matter how much, you know, it's like when your favorite band gets big, right? Like you love this band, you go and see them, then they get big, and then you get mad at them for getting big. It's like this <laughs> fucked up relationship. <laughs> That's exactly what's gonna happen here. It's gonna happen. Some people are gonna get big. They're gonna go to the next platform. But the reality is, you need to be thoughtful. The market speaks. Just because you've been fucking with it, let me, make, let, me, let me help everybody here real good. Cannabis has been around much longer than you've been fucking around. You're not even close to OG. Grandfather's grandfather's grandfather isn't fucking OG, so calm the fuck down. <laughs> It's very nice to been smoking weed for a minute. We're selling it, we're marketing it, we're thinking about it, we're legitimizing it, that's fine. But way too many people at this moment spend half their energy on ideology when they can be spending that all on execution. I sat with a lot of people that were way ahead of me in social media, but they wanted to debate why it was cooler when all just nerds were on it and not club promoters. And they were just debating and debating and complaining and pontificating, and I was executed, and executed, and executed. This is going to be one of the biggest industries in the world, period, right? There's gonna be plenty for everybody, the OGs. I, for all of you that love it and want it to stay special, good news, the market will always speak. Whoever brings the most value to the end consumer gets to be the winner, not your opinion of who's doing it right. Yeah. It will play out. <laughs> and so, what I would say more than anything, as somebody who's seen these patterns play out over and over and over again. <clears throat> Become a historian. Watch what happened in hip hop over the last 50 years. Watch what happened in tech over the last 30 years. This is very simple. It's very simple. If you really understand. And I guess where I'm coming at is in the same energy that I was sad that I didn't take it from 3200 and why I popped. There's one reason why for the people that have discovered me in the last 18 months, even though I've been around for a decade, it's because when I saw it happen again, like Google, this time I didn't fuck up, I went all. There was no hedge. And I got the advantages from that, from a personal brand awareness standpoint, things of that nature. This whole fucking space is that moment. 
That's what's happening in the macro in this entire space. They're taken from somebody who could ship to the state and then couldn't, lost license, couldn't. Like, I've been through a regulated business since I was 15 years old and really gave a fuck about my family business. I have been picked on by the authorities because I did it best. I fucking dealt with, you know, one day I just got a letter and we were shipping to Texas and now Texas picked one store in the country that couldn't ship anymore. I lost four million bucks in one night for small business not funded, you know, like, I've been through it, I get it. And, and really, I'm not looking to be Debbie Downer, but I want people to wrap their fucking head around this. This would be a long game. Regulations and rules are here until you die. This is, listen, be a historian. Be a historian. Go read. I mean this. Take the 15 fucking hours and go read and watch videos and documentaries of the first 15 years after prohibition in America. If you do, you will start understanding patterns. That will help you make good business decisions on where you're going. Understand the people that sell the pigs and the shovels make money during gold rushes. Understand why there's only one or two Coca-Cola and Pepsis and Marlboro's. Understand. Be thoughtful. Because here's the biggest thing that you could do during this time. You need to be flexible. When I think back of tech, and that's really the one, the people that were building the next big startup, the amount of homies that I had that were offered to be number seven, number nine, number 15 at Facebook and Uber, but didn't go because they were building a schnuber. We <laughs> 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 fucked up. There's a lot of you in here right now who have a business that has no fucking shot. You think it does. You're excited. Meanwhile, the person's literally sitting right next to you is about to build a billion dollar CPG brand. You're homies. She's killing it and grows, and about four months she's gonna hit you up and be like, yo, you wanna come and join my shit and be this? And you're gonna say no because you got fucking ego and you think Schmoogler is still gonna make it. <laughs> and then in six years you're gonna come up to me and be like, yo, you gave this talk at this conference and the whole Schmoogler thing? Yeah, that was me. I fucking held on to Schmoogler. Number 17 at her startup made 44 trillion dollars, and I fucking work at the Bank of America. <laughs> There's a reason I'm painting you this picture. Not to make a joke or razz. This is stupid good in here. This is remarkable, because guess what? Now in 2018, unlike 2005, 6, 7, 8, 9, you don't get to be number seven at Uber and Facebook anymore because you're part of the system. Those companies hire bullshit people from Harvard. You understand? There's a you like that one? <laughs> I like it too, and I'm glad you bought it. Because let me tell you, you will never ever, ever forget this talk, hopefully for one reason, not that I was so great, but because I'm gonna pound this fucking message down your throat. This is a remarkably good time for you to be in this business. This crew is the creme of that business. This is that time. You know how many people in here are gonna leave and go to different states when shit goes down? This is gonna happen. This is gonna happen. And I just hate it. And, I, and I'm coming from a place of pain, and it's not real pain, but it's like, there's a, there's, there's a good Russian word for it. It's called a bidna. It's kind of like this mix of like, it fucking sucks, they shouldn't have fucked, like, it's, it's, I, there's no good thing, you know what it is? Yeah, it's like, that's the better word. There's no English word for the feeling that I have, but there's 50 people I'm thinking about from 2005 to 2008 that were in it, that were in it, could have done one of 30 things that would have worked and didn't for one reason. They didn't understand how big it was. This is a mature industry that's just getting started. This is a mature industry that is just getting started. You have to be thoughtful when you were smart enough to be in it. If I'm sitting in there, I'm saying hello to everybody and trying to desperately figure out how I can bring the most value to everybody in this room. I come to this space with two core things. And my partners know this at Green Street. Desperately I want to listen and learn. Just listen and learn. And two, disproportionately figure out how I can help. How can I help? 
And I think this keynote for me was the first step in helping, which is I'm giving you a very clear picture of what the fuck's going on. And you may know a hell of a lot more about the nuance of the space, but I fucking promise you right now, I know what I'm talking about in this moment, at this time. Because that's the only thing I'm good at. I have one pitch. Mariano fucking Rivera. One pitch. <laughs> and that pitch is, I understand what people are going to do before they do it. I know exactly how this is going to play out. So I implore you to take advantage of this remarkable moment in your industry where it's not a baby, but it hasn't even started. And I highly recommend you understand how early platforms and industries start. The ROI is in the fucking people. The ROI is in the fucking people. I promise you right now, everybody is watching how you're navigating right now. Everybody is watching. And there's a lot of you, and I, I fucking was in the hall for four minutes. There's a lot of you, unfortunately, getting seduced by the short-term ROI and finances in the system, and everybody knows it. And you will lose. Three of you will get through and make that trade. That's fine. We'll never see you again. But most of you will have a spark letter for trying to take from it instead of giving to it. So be thoughtful, navigate, understand. You know, I'm sure a lot of you thought where I would go with the keynote. I'm happy to. Actually, I'll probably open it up since it's a small room for some Q&A. But on the marketing front, I'll be honest with you. We're going to do plenty of things, and I know we're working with a bunch of you on the green speech side. But at the macro, you have to think that you're a publisher, not an advertiser. You have to produce content. You have to produce content. And I highly recommend the audio space. I think there's four to seven winning cannabis industry, the cannabis consumer, <laughs> cannabis culture, podcasts, and I think whoever moves first and best, first and best, will see a humongous impact on their business. I fully expect an email from somebody in this room in nine months saying, I heard you, I made it, it's fucking killing it, we're selling shit like fucking crazy, I fucking love you, Gary B. <laughs> <laughs> My friends, I'm so grateful to give this talk. I'd like, to open, I'd like to get more specific because I gave you my thesis, so to bring more value, I'd like to open up the Q&A for a couple questions, but I wish you nothing but health, and thank you for having me. Anybody have a question? Awesome. What do you think about Elon Musk and his stack going down when he was live and smoking blood? See, we're starting off easy. <laughs> a couple of things run through my mind. First, I think that Elon doesn't give a fuck. <laughs> There's nothing better in life besides health. The biggest thing I wish on you is being in a position to not give a fuck. <laughs> understands brand. I think Elon lost some points with people that are about to die and won a ton. <laughs> and won a ton of points with people that aren't born yet. I think Elon would be okay. <laughs> Questions? Anyone? Okay, she, okay, she. So, uh, Gary, we had a chance yes, earlier. Sir. I mentioned that I have an agency that inspired me to start mine a few years back. And um, now I'm moving into the cannabis space yes. as an agency. Yes. The challenge I'm having is obviously taking your advice and telling brands content, need to create content. What is your advice in convincing uh, all of these emerging brands into making that investment into creating great content that provides value and you know building the email list and all of those different things? How do you bridge that gap of convincing them to understand? I think the biggest thing an agency, and to be very frank, the biggest thing a person should do is not convince anybody. I, I spend zero time trying to convince people. They don't need, you know this, Vayner Media is a social media agency. We sold hundred million dollars a year on shit that nobody really wants to buy at that, you know this. Like, convincing them is a complete waste of time. What I would say is communicate with them, make relationships, give your pitch. When they don't go with you, right? They don't go with you when somebody goes with you. I'd rather you ask 8,000 and get nine clients than dwell on 37 to try to convince because the energy will amortize and you'll actually build a business. And here's the best part of getting 2,000 no's. After you go and fucking dismantle it, 
You get to look at him and say, you fucked up, dick. <laughs> I mean it. Like, the only thing better than yes is no. <laughs> when you're good enough. Yeah. Right? First yeah. off, I, I'd like to thank you very much for your time. I think everybody in here values your time tremendously. Thank you. Um, with that being said, I think the largest challenge that a lot of these brands are facing right now is that the consumer is evolved. Because of the tax structure they were forced to deal with in the expensive markets, it's elevated the price structure, which put a lot of the traditional pur purchasers and consumers outside of the traditional legal ways to purchase yep. cannabis or outside of the price. That's right. What are the top three strategies you can give to each of these brands to identify and build brand loyalty with their new consumer? Look, I think number one, two, and three is patience. <laughs> like, it's, you, you've got to wrap your head around patience, right? I think event marketing will help, right? I think content will help. You know, the reason why you do a podcast, look, if you make a podcast called 43-Year-Old Mom, that's literally the name of it, and you're targeting housewives and high net worth individuals who are gonna be in the edible space because that's who you're targeting, you've gotta really just go after your, con your target audience with content that they'll consume. That's always been the case. But the reason I said one, two, and three is patience is because that's what it's gonna take. There's still a fucking massive stigma. Go fucking read the first 15 years of prohibition. How many people in here for life? Raise your hand. For life. You want to be in this industry for life. Raise your hand. It's okay not to be. I'm just curious. Raise your hand for life. Cool. Super easy for everybody who just wrote, raise their hand. If you're in here for a quick score, and by the way, a quick score might be seven or four years, not even months. That's okay. Like, I don't think we should boo you out of the fucking building. Like, this America, do you. I just think you need to be smart and realize there's a fucking stigma. Guys, Nancy Reagan did a good fucking job. <laughs> She's a fucking gangster. <laughs> That's a fucking branding lady. Go watch it. They figured it out. Like, don't get it confused. That takes a long time to unwind. So, like, my big thing is, it's, bro, I've lived in my whole life. Social media, I got shit on. Everything was a no. And I was a wine guy. I was a wine guy peddling social media to big companies. They didn't fucking want to hear from me. They Googled me and found one video. I said, fuck, 38 times. They said, no, thank you. <laughs> I enjoy patience. And so, you know, I, I think, like, it's going to be very easy to find them when Google, you know, releases their restrictions. Or when TV, like, there's a lot that will happen. Plenty of money comes in. Buy fucking commercials that they like. Like, there's a lot you'll be able to do. But I'm telling you, my guy, it's one, two, and three is patience. You know, everybody just, like, this is cultural. This is the majority of my Instagram fucking content. Everybody thinks making a million dollars a year is the beginning of making it in a world where $440,000 a year is the top 1% and above of the earners in America. My biggest problem with everybody's brands here is they just have to wait. We're early. Like, Internet 96, when nobody was buying wine for me, and I mean nobody, the first year, we did 17,000 for the year. My dad, Sasha Vaynerchuk, was pissed. <laughs> it got a lot happier three years later when it was four million. It's early. And the good news is, with the way the taxes work, they're all in the same boat. It's not like he doesn't have to pay them, and he does, that's, he has an advantage. This is now the market. You know cheap alcohol was when it was bootleg? <laughs> History, bro. I, uh, hello? Yep, can you hear me? Okay. Just... Um, anyway, um, my question is... Um, can you get it closer to your mouth? Oh, okay. There you go. Can you hear me? Okay. Um, so my question is, do you have a personal mantra or something that um, inspires you daily to keep doing what you're doing and or keep you grounded? Yeah. It's called Nobody Gives a Fuck About My Feelings. <laughs> I appreciate it. I'll tell you why it's an important mantra. We are living through right now, especially in America. Look, I don't want to get like super macro here, but here's what happened. We should be just getting out of a depression or a massive recession. We, and this is not political, 
on the back of the Democrats and the Republicans. We as Americans in 2009 didn't have the appetite to eat shit. So we bailed the whole thing out. We are in the most ludicrous generation of entitlement of all time. And this isn't the kids. The fucking parents are the ones that raised these fucking kids. This is the parents and the kids and the grandparents. We have lived through abundance and growth and easy street for a long fucking time. Of course, not all of us in circumstances. We got plenty of issues, but in the fucking macro. So the reason I'm always happy every morning and my, why my mantra works for me is the only people in the world that listen to you complain are other fucking losers and your mom. <laughs> and so like, once you go there and realize that nobody's listening, because here's why, and I really want people to hear this, this comes from empathy. People have their own fucking problems. People don't get it. Really, you know what the biggest, scariest things in the world are? Having too little and having too much. When you're poor as fuck and on welfare, you don't think the trust fund baby who's got 100 mils got a bad, you think that's the greatest. What you don't realize is that kid is always gonna be told that he never made it and he's got a drug problem and fucked up and on meds and at the psychiatrist because his game was broken before he even started. The bottom line is, my dear, everybody's got fucking problems too. Because when it's yours, it's yours. And so I navigate happy because I'm just grateful for what I have. And other people have more, other people have less. And I had a whole lot less, I was happy with the fuck I had. And I just every day recognize that if I'm in my own head and realize that everybody's got their own shit too, then I don't spend time complaining and dwelling, I spend time on doing. Thank you for your time, this was awesome. And um, my question is, do you think it's a good idea to create technology and start in the cannabis industry and then branch out of the cannabis industry? Because I've been working on something that, it's the end discrimination during the hiring process. I think that's a big problem in this industry. But I also feel like that's a big problem in every other industry. Couldn't be more passionate about you doing that. That will work. Okay. When there's that problems, <laughs> oftentimes, Fixing something in the micro leads to you solving the bigger issue. Could so many of the biggest things ever started off feeding a niche and then realized that it worked for more. And so, bro, Instagram was made for photographers. <laughs> so yeah, if you can solve, if you decide, because you're in this space and you understand it, that if you can stop. You know, if you can get to that place where we can get all the data and not know who the person is and make hiring decisions, you know, you're gonna learn two things. One, it will work, and two, it's not the software, it's that we need less fuck faces making decisions. <laughs> Just a simple question. What's uh, some of your books on prohibition that you recommend? That was funny. That's a great question. I I've never read a book on it. Um, like, I read like six books. But I, <laughs> but I'm, I'm sure I've written five. Uh, I'm six. Um, I'm laughing at what these books were. Show me. Um, but I would go much deeper into Google. I'm also super into like documentaries more so. So like literally, I, would, I don't because it's literally been Google City USA for me. Like I don't remember shit. I can see it's in, it's out. I would just go down, and you know what the best thing about like Google or Wikipedia is? It's like, and even Instagram accounts, like, there's something amazing about the internet where you start on one thing, and then nine hours later, you're like, you're like reading about panda bear shit. <laughs> so, I think if you can stay disciplined and you stay within prohibition, like, it's amazing what's actually out there information wise. But to be honest, even the fact that you're asking that question, it gets me so pumped. And know a little bit about your business because you have flexibility in some products and not in others. Like, it's crazy to me that you, because I know enough of your, your business, may read a story about how Anheuser Busch did this with the beer barrels during this time, which and you'll be like, fuck, that's what's going on. You know, like, that's where this shit gets good. What gets good if your brain synthesizes history that allows it to understand what's happening in the contemporary world that's tried and true, you can take that advantage. 
I understood everybody was gonna be on cell phones. I bet my life that the iPhone was gonna be big, right? Guys, Facebook is an app company. Facebook owns WhatsApp, Facebook, right? Instagram, they're apps. It's a trillion dollar fucking company that is apps on the iPhone. I knew that was gonna work because what I understood is you need a platform and then everything's built on top of it, right? ABC, NBC, CBS built on top of the television, right? Look for patterns, and I think if you do that, you'll find it. So I don't have an answer in detail. The good news is it's super easy to find. <laughs> I'm okay, sneak in there, sneak in there. Yeah. Hey, uh, Last one. Long time to see, got fun Tasha represent. I don't know if y'all know New Jersey, but whatever. <laughs> uh, so anyway, uh, on Snapchat I saw something about uh, e-cigarettes, and they're kind of running into an issue right now, or soon to be running into an issue with their marketability because they feel like it might be branding towards children. So, and with that, uh, is this something where you kind of see that coming with cannabis, and is this something where you can kind of get in while the getting is good, and then make sure you stay away from it once the legislation comes, or is this something where you think ahead and kind of say, no, I know it's no. going to go there, let's think about it differently? No, look, I think, that's a great question. Look, I think everybody here knows, and this is kind of, you know, I think you can see I've taken a lot of things in a macro because I thought that was the best value. Like, I'm very fearful that people think this is all gonna be figured out in regulation, like, cool, in six, two or six years we'll get a Democrat, and four years after that, like, cool, I can't wait, in 10 years this will be set, I'm 41, at 51, cool, I'm good with that, 20 years, this is forever. This is forever. You, have made a decision to be in an industry that will be over-regulated for the rest of your life. I promise you that. And that's super okay. I did the first 20 years of my business life in a super regulated business. But it still sucks compared to not regulated businesses. <laughs> like, I don't know what else to tell you. And so, much like the admiration I have for Travis, I could have never built Uber. Because Travis had a DNA that was good at fighting City Hall. I'm scared of City Hall. That's just my DNA. So I think everybody here has to make a decision for them if they have the must, you know, the muscle memory and the stomach to deal with the ebbs and flows of things. The toughest thing, and anybody will know this, the number one toughest thing to me in life is not having little, because you know, it's having little, getting something, getting a lot, and then losing. People going backwards just struggle. And I think the toughest thing in a regulated business is, cool, they open up Illinois, a couple people here have Chicago roots, or they move, they go, and they crush it, they saw what happened in Cali, they went to Illinois, they fucking kill it, and then for some reason, seven years later, they re-regulate it, and it's gone. Tough. That is what you're signing up for. And I think the better, kind of like nobody gives a fuck about your feelings, right? The, the quicker you understand this is gonna be regulated in perpetuity, then you can start really starting to think about how you navigate and how you go about it. Um, I do think the bigger companies, you see the constellations, we see the behind, we see what's going on, I think that will help. And that will be a stabilizing force. I wouldn't be here if I thought this was so unstable, right? Uh, but I think that you're not gonna know. And honestly, living in fear and what ifs is a bad business strategy. So I think you pay attention to what you wanna do. I highly recommend you going deep into the thing you're most passionate about. I, one great thing about the world right now is it's more global than ever. One terrible thing about Americans is we're very insular and we really just think about America. So if I can get you to start thinking, obviously this space is thinking, you guys never gave such a fuck about Canada like you do now. <laughs> <laughs> you guys couldn't fucking name one city in Canada seven years ago. Now you know suburbs of fucking Winnipeg. I know you. <laughs> So I think more of that, you know, thinking a little bit more global, like if you, if you don't have a fucking passport or you don't travel or you don't like traveling, it's breaking your patterns and trying to get into that. So I do think global will be a way for a lot of people here to subsidize some of the vulnerability. America's a very funny place. Funnier than we realize a lot of times. So you need to be thoughtful, but I'm a big fan of you sleep in the bed that you make. So I think, going back to that great question a young lady asked, I think if you're signing up to be in this, and you're gonna be such a fucking genius in 30 years for being in early, then you better be prepared for all the punches in the fucking mouth. And if it doesn't go your way, 
we've got to be ready for this. To me, this space reminds me of UFC. This isn't boxing. Everybody in here will have an L. Everybody will lose. But I think if you sign up for that and you understand it, it makes you so much more capable to win in this space. So I wish you guys the best. I'm so grateful that I was able to give this talk at this time. It means a lot to me. I'm super excited to get to know the majority of you over the next two or three decades. And I wish you great health and great success. Thank you so much.